crappies. Ha ha ha! Welcome back to the channel, everybody. That truck driving off right there. I didn't even have time to catch the guy's name, but he just saved my butt. I'm sitting there, here trying to go dangling, and my truck has a bad battery right now. And he just brought out a device that I have to have as much as I'm on the road. It has a box that literally will, he said it will jump a dead diesel truck. So. I'm gonna have to go invest in one of those. We were gonna get out on the lake early, do a little topwater action. Obviously, that's not gonna happen. We're running into some problems here, but come along for the journey. It's gonna be a fun ride as always. Moment of truth right here, come on. Yeah. And that's my old battery, old crusty. Boy, it is an interesting day right here. <laughs> wow! Well, we got off to a slow start, but we are finally making way to the lake. While we're on our way, let me tell you about today's awesome sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Mystery Tackle Box, the best and most awesome tackle subscription service available. MTB makes your life a lot easier by putting some straight up dangle goods in one awesome juicy box delivered to your doorstep every month and depending on the time of year, they choose the best lures that are gonna be working for that season. So every month you're gonna be opening up the box discovering new lures that are gonna help you wrangle in old Big Sally out there. And if you've still got questions on how to use your awesome tackle, well just log on to mysterytacklebox.com or check out the literature inside the box to help you discover how to master the lures that are inside. I've used Mystery Tackle Box for years and even signed up some of my friends and family for this awesome service, but you don't have to take my word for it. You can get on mysterytacklebox.com and read some of the awesome five-star reviews from Total Dangler Strangers. MTB is so confident you're gonna love it, they're offering you your first box for five bucks. Almost had a 10-pounder, To make it easy for you, I left a link in the top of the description. Go ahead and click that and Mondo code will be applied. That's right, old code Mondo will get you your first box for as low as five buckaroonies. Whoa. If you're a fishing freak like me and you want to experience Fishmas in a box every month, go ahead and get signed up and get your day on. to MTB for sponsoring today's video and uh, just supporting this channel in general. Beautiful lake we are on today, y'all. Decided to roll up here to Oklahoma. And I've never fished this lake before, so this is gonna be interesting. And always interesting when you're at a lake you've never been to. Right now I'm just kinda get, getting some navigatory systems going here. My graph has not completely started up yet. So I need that, just to kind of look at the lake, look at the contour, see what's going on. It looks to be a rocky lake though. Water temps right now are looking like the sun is in the face. 66 degrees. I'm gonna try right on this little point right here, just a little toppy top, just to keep them honest, you know? Okay, nothing, nothing doing there. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the mysteries and see what we have in here. This is the Pro Box for October. First of all, we got our full sticker, which I usually stick uh, in somewhere cool, but I started a trend lately of just putting them on my dash. So going with there, collect them all kind of thing. A shimmer swimmer from 10,000 fish. So a little swim bait. Ooh, we can put that on the back of this Z-Man spinner bait right here. A little dart spin. So another little swimming blade style combo. Ooh, we have swim baits. Ooh, we have a little crankbait by Cotton Cordell, Yum Money Minnow. 
and a sweet spot tackle. This looks like some sort of little finesse worm. Ooh, this is a good box for this lake, y'all. I had no idea what was gonna be in here. So this is, we are on target on key. Put this uh, Z-Man spinner bait on with the Shimmer Swimmer as the trailer. Oh, something happened right there. Something gave it a little, little knick-knack paddywhack. Typically in the fall, bass will start to chase shad, like all species. will start to really get on shad. They get on points really good. Um, top water is a big player. They, they will go into the creeks at certain times, just chasing, chasing the shad. Shad go back in there to spawn. Oh man, ooh, I just saw a little bait fish up around this shallow cover. That's my first clue. So I saw a little tail flick around the edge of this grass. So that could mean that there's some bait that is using uh, the vegetation to spawn with, if they are spawning. There's a fish right there, little guy. But that's our first indicator. That's a spotted bass. That spotted bass should be in here. 100%. I see them thriving in, the, in here. So a little bait fish just spotted in the shallow grass right there. Sometimes on these points, a uh, wow, just really screwed up there. Make sure to take this little band off if you get one of these hounds. Scoogan Squad Hounds. I'm just throwing this bone bone color on this point. I just had one uh, come up and, and boil on it. Probably didn't get them because the hooks were tied together, but walking baits like this are, are really good on lakes that have clear water and long extended points. You know, if the fish are down there, sometimes you can get them to come up and you can at least see them like I did right there. You know, they're curious, they'll come up behind it, boil on it, and then you know, well, okay, I can throw a swim bait or something out there. And uh, I'm actually gonna pick up this yum money minnow. Slow roll that out there on a little belly weighted hook. Oh, just saw one boil up there. So I'm boil at the surface, gave himself away. Oh gosh, hit it right on impact. Right as it hit the water. Okay, we know we got some fish running around here and they're off of the end of this point as well. Let's see if you guys can see this right here. That, there's fish on the end of this point right here that I marked. 15 feet of water on the end of a point. If they're on these points, and there's just hundreds of them out here, we'll be in good shape. Hooked up, no way you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me, did I find the walleye down there? Is that what I just did? Excuse a moi. I don't think I have ever caught one of these outside of Canada. Wow, those gill plates are sharp. I'm going to look up the regulations because if, if I've got a wad of these guys. Oh, there's a tasty treat to be had. Look at those teeth, my gosh. Those teeth are no joke. Okie dokie, y'all. That is gonna make a delicious fish sandwich. Uh, and according to the regulations, they have to be 14 inches long, and I can keep six of those if I decide to keep fishing, fishing for them. They're so tasty. I actually don't think that's a walleye, a true walleye. I think it's a subspecies of, of sauger or sawguy. I'm not really sure. I haven't caught enough of them. I mean, that's literally my, my first one. I don't think walleye really get past uh, it's like mid Oklahoma. We're kind of Southern Oklahoma here, but hey, new lake, new species. And we're just gonna see where the bite takes us. Look at this calmness. I would like a little bit of wind, but there's none. There's a little jig, little guy. What are you doing, sir? Small mouth. Second species of the day on the yig. 
Gotta love the aggressiveness of a smallmouth bass. ISO weed patch for the win. Five pounder. Wow, they are just not dialing into my playbook today. I just saw two bald eagles fighting or mating, either one, in the air. And I decided that's somewhere I want to be. That's why we're fishing at this next location. Problem. We are having problems today, y'all. I don't know what is going on. The trolling motor, which is a Minkota Ultrex, well, it's got a, it's got, it's like electronically steered, you know, electronic steering. Something going on here, it's it's not. It's not steering. I have to like press as hard as I can to get that head to turn. Normally, that is just with the ease, a slight ease. It only goes one way. It does not go the other way. So if I let off of that, it, uh, it tends to want to just go into to the back position. So obviously there is an electronic mechanism that has gone awry in there. We'll try to do the best we can. Luckily, it's not too windy, although I do feel a slight breeze behind my back. It's always a good day when you can go fishing. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. But we were having some problems. I don't know what I did to the world. Here we go, folks. I think it's a smallie. It is. Molly fighting hard out there. Gosh, why are you so small though? I thought that was gonna be a hog. I caught that one off this big point right here, way out, way out on the little finesse worm. And I was just thinking to myself, whoa, out here, very end of the point, you know it. Ugh. Oh, I'm getting old. Well, bam, I had to get myself another. This is a small one though. These are new species. I'm trying to figure them out. So I just put on a spoon. That one's way too small. They are so close to the bottom. They literally look like part of the bottom. Completing the cycle with a large mouth LFG on the board. Wow, y'all. I mean, that's that's where like a five or six pounder should be. Just right in there. Throw that little jiglet in there and just watch it get thumped. I don't I don't get where the big fish are out here. I mean, we're not even talking like close to keeper range. Well, I really don't have the slightest idea how to catch fish out here. The right size fish, anyway. The right size bass. What I do have, which is amazing, I, I, I think one other time I've had this, it was in Canada. Two of the best freshwater eating species of all time. A walleye or a sauger, whatever, and then a crappie. Oh, I just got a fish right there on the drop. If this is another crappie, give me the crappies. Give me the crappies right now, yes. I did not stage that fish, I promise. He's gotta be 10 inches. The guy's not gonna make the cut. I think it'd be pretty interesting if I took the saw guy, walleye, whatever it is, and then the crappie, and then did a catch and cook side by side. I'm out here catching these suckers at 45 feet of water, y'all. It's insane. Oh, I just had another one. Oh, got him. We found the crappies. Another little guy. Oh, it's a keeper, though. He's going to keep. My gosh, they're taking this spoon like a champ. 
I'm not going to argue with these fish being wanting to bite right now. And that happened to be the best tasting fish of all time. But we're going to see. Is it the crappie or is it the sauger, walleye, whatever that species is that's going to taste better? Might as well drop me down and get another one. Oh, they're biting it, y'all. We're on a hot bite here. Oh, oh, this is feeling much heavier. Be a sauger. Be a big crappie. It's a white bass, y'all. I'm unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I can't go anywhere without catching a white bass. I have caught more species in this lake today than I think any other lake. I'm just missing a catfish is all. Let that guy go. He's not quite as tasty as the others. What is going on here with the electronics? Oh my gosh, we're on. Oh, unbelievable numbers of fish. What is happening? I think every fish in the lake just showed up here right now. Get bit, got, oh, felt better. This must be white bass, they're smoking it. Feels like my old familiar friend, yep. Digging hard. Holy cow, we are on some fish right now, y'all. The crappies, ha <laughs> ha Oh yeah, I'm still on them. These are the white bass. Oh, they're hammering it. Must be the white bass. Back on board. What do we got? Oh, big white bass, holy cow. Like when the white bass come in, it's just a, just a mad flurry of action. I feel like everything leaves. I just had one on right there. The old paper mouth. Ah, there he is. That's a crop. That's gonna be a good one. Oh, this could be a sauger actually. It's on the bottom, fighting a little weird. Fighting a little weird. Oh, it's a drum! Add another species to the list, y'all! We got a drum! Holy moly, this is insane. This is insane. I have caught more species of fish today than I, I think I ever have in a day. All I'm missing is a catfish and a bluegill and I've pretty much got the entire lake. This technique is pungent in the fall, y'all. When fish really start to stack up like they're doing now, you know, maybe they're gonna go into the creeks here next week or whatever the next cold front is. But when they start all stacking up on points, woo, this kind of fishing, you just get on one spot and all the fish come to you in droves and I'm not kidding you, normally it happens around three or four in the afternoon. And we're looking at 422 right now. I got a fish here. Hot. I don't know what it was. Didn't get a great look. And uh, there's just all sorts of species that are coming at the end of this point. I'm in 37 feet of water. It drops off into, you know, much deeper than that. Surrounding this thing, there's not a huge creek that it's out in front of, but there's a lot of pockets that are close to it. So it's just got everything coming out here and feeding on these shad. I haven't been able to find uh, shad in shallow water. They've all been very deep. Oh, ah, uh, that's something big. That's, oh, what do we got here? Another drum! That pulled really hard at first. I thought it was gonna be like a big sauger or something. The live well is definitely heftier, y'all. We got about 45 minutes left of good solid light before the sun starts setting. The activity I've seen on the points today would say that's probably where the majority of the fish are. I just haven't figured out that shallow largemouth bite if, ex if it exists. Everything else, pretty much dialed. Throwing a little toppy top maybe to finish the day with a bass. I have really been through the smorgasbord of fish today. 
we are about to take home these fish and see which is the best, which is the best freshwater species to eat. This lake still confuses me a little bit. It's got spurts of greatness and then there's just this barrenness. It's hard to get over and uh, I've had a hard time locating any kind of good shallow bite, which is confusing to me. It looks so good up there. Oh my God, on the point. Massive bass blast. Oh, that's not a terrible cast either. Oh, that was not a tiny one. No, sir, that was full grown. One just tried to eat it. Just tried to eat it. Oh gosh, what the heck is going on? They just won't eat good. Can't get them. I'm trying everything. I'm trying my darndest on the bass. Tiny guys. I just don't know. Besides that one fish just a second ago that was blowing up. That was an actual good one. Oh, hey. What do we got here? Another tiny? Yes. Another tiny explosion. This lake is just full of the brown ones. Alrighty. Get bigger. Y'all get bigger, dang it. I wish there was a big old sow belly on it just to finish out the day. We've got our food. I just want a big bite. Oh, one behind it. Oh, that was a little, a little sassier one there. True story, I once watched a smallmouth try to eat a white bass, like a fully grown white bass. You just think eventually one of these would be like a two pounder. The 10 incher army is strong here. Oh, hey now, what's up? Oh, there's a good one. Hey, welcome to the show. Watch that fish come up. Here we go now. A little better smallie. Ah, <laughs> 14 incher. That sound right there was awesome. I actually watched that fish boil that was out there in that calm water and he just blah, blah. It was the sweet sound of explosions. Oh. Smallest smallmouth of the day. Still gonna sniff him. All the way, because I love him. Made it back to the treehouse and we're making some golden crispies. Yeah! It is about lunchtime here next day here at the treehouse and we're gonna take these out, clean them, and put them in some new batter. Uh, some batters that we've been testing out uh, actually to, to make for you guys some different selections. Uh, one that I haven't tried yet, so we're doing some experimentation on that. And interesting fact, after I did a little research, you know, I kept calling whatever I caught out there, walleye, sauger, sauguy, and all these little subspecies of walleyes. So interesting fact here, if you uh, look at the cheek pieces, and you can actually eat the cheeks, by the way. The cheeks are tasty, but the cheeks of a walleye are scaleless. They're nice and smooth. Watch these little plates right here, they'll get you. But the actual cheeks of a sauger or a, a sog eye, those will feel rough. They'll have scales in there. So I did not know they were this far south, but anyway, they were delicious. We do know that. So now knowing those are up there, not very far away, I'm probably gonna have to go after them a little bit more. Cleaning the fish up today with the old electric filet knot just so we can save a little bit of time. And let's just start off with the walleye. Woo! Man, these things are just easy to clean. Go right down that spine there. Look at this delicious, tasty white meat here. Woo-hoo! The fillet of the walleye. Incredibly easy to clean, y'all. So easy. Ooh. Ooh. 
Goodness, those clean up easy, y'all. And this is why I think these are such a close battle for the best freshwater fish. Look at the meat, it's so pure and white. And crappie, very similar, just like an elongated version. Next up, the crappie. In specific, the white crappie. But they clean up well too. Take out that rib cage. And there, my friends, is your crappie filet. Let's fire up the grease and let the taste battle begin. Some folks like to use kitchens. I'm more of a outdoor kind of guy. It's not a true golden crispy unless it's outside. Yeah. If you do an indoor kitchen, it's, it's half a crispy. So I've got a uh, prototype mix here of a uh, lemon pepper batter that we're gonna use. Ridiculous looking fish glove for safety. I did manage to uh, get, get the cheek pieces out. So the cheek pieces, that's a very, very tender delicacy. Just a small nugget out of, out of those fish. But um, the white bass too, I kept a couple of those. You can definitely tell they're a little bit more red. Not as pristine as our pure white meat friends here. So let's get some batter on them. Let's throw them in the grease. Walleye and crappie fillets mixed, mixed together. Roll them around. No. Oh my gosh. It's really strong. It's covered really well though. We're just going with our 10 inch uh, camp pan here today. Since we're not doing too much. Another crappie. And walleye. Yew. That's perfect. That's perfect for doing four fillets right there that size. Remember one of the keys to look for if your fish is done. Number one, golden. Is it golden? Is it golden crispy? When they start to float, that's when I like to take them out. I'm gonna take the walleye out last because it's just a little beefier. While those are cooling off, I'm just gonna dust around this cheek piece and try it as well. That should cook up really quick. It's time we determine what is the greatest tasting freshwater fish of all time. I think when it really comes down to it, if everyone were to take a poll, all the danglers across the US, it would be the walleye and the crappie as the top two. Delicious flaky meat, both of them. The walleye, normally colder water, lives deeper, but both of these were caught very deep. Same condition, same day, same fryer, so now we can really know. First up, let's try my old favorite, the crappie. Let's break a piece off, see the flakiness. Oh. Wow, these are cooked amazingly. We did these right. My dad would be proud. Shout out to LFD. Same batter, let's go in for a flavor check. Wow. The texture of a crappie seems unbeatable to me. It is absolutely fantastic, y'all. They're they're almost like uh, like creamy. They're so soft. Their flesh is so soft. And what I love to do is put them in a cooler, let them chill overnight at least. Don't freeze them and cook them up the next day. It's so incredible. Oh, next up, the great and powerful walleye. Let's break it for flakiness, crispiness. <gasps> Breaks apart super easy, but the bigger flakes inside, this is this is what I'm interested in. The meat breaks down in smaller little flakes with the crappie, with the walleye, it's it's bigger chunks. Let's see what we got here. Oh. Oh. It melts. It melts in your mouth. I'm gonna have to go for another taste. Oh my goodness, y'all. I wish you were here to taste it. It's absolutely phenomenal. Look at that deliciously cooked piece. Holy moly. I'm literally slapping my knee I think that's gonna take the win, y'all. Eating them at the exact same time, same conditions, everything across the board. The walleye takes the cake. Holy cow, let me just try this cheek piece right here. This is the delicacy. 
overcooked, but still amazing. That is it. I am going to have to get back out and try to target these guys. That completes today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments. I'm curious if you like the longer form. I've been doing some more just longer form videos. It takes a while to get through them, but in my mind, it's something you can just turn on, chill, relax, and watch for a while rather than just, uh, you know, uh, more shorter episodes. So anyway, let me know down in the comments if you want more longer form episodes with more details and things. But if you want to just keep it short and sweet, let me know too. I'm down to make either or. Shout out to MTB for sponsoring today's video again. And don't forget to subscribe right here to the channel so you don't miss every single day in the outdoors. Love you guys. I will see you right back here on the next one. Hashtag no ketchup needed. That was incredible. Somebody get me a cold adult beverage right now. This is amazing. Mm -hmm.